All right. So my name is Lisa Chasen. I'm in the Global Studies uh, in Education program. Uh, this is a qualitative research study that I did called Riding the Bus in Orchard Downs, a case of grounded globalization. If people don't know, Orchard Downs is a housing complex mostly for graduate students and their uh, dependents and families and it's a concentration of international students. The purpose of this study is to look closely at an example of what I called grounded globalization. The tendency is for globalization to be talked about as an immense historic and socioeconomic force, but how does it materialize and take shape in individual lives and within a community? How do people whose situation and living conditions can be attributed to developments at a global and stratospheric level experience and make sense of their everyday lives within a particular and localized context. The idea of a grounded everyday globalization stems from my work, uh, stems from work on everyday racism, a literature that identifies normalized but pernicious attitudes and acts based on racial and ethnic differences. My overarching initial question was, can a similar approach be applied to globalization? In effect, how do we do, glo how do we do, how do we enact, carry out, live everyday globalization? I was also influenced by Paul Kennedy's work translating the global to the local. So for this small scale study, which may lead to a larger project, I have, identifi I have identified a site of internationalization slash globalization within the local community and the university to observe what goes on there. The site is the Orchard Downs housing community, a 160-acre complex of over 70 buildings and more than 1,000 residents specifically designated for graduate family housing that over the years has become a concentrated area of international students, their children and extended families, and short-term visiting scholars. More specifically, the case for this study is the bus that takes people between their homes in Orchard Downs and campus. By the way, this is the only slide I have. It won't be changing. Uh, the bus provides a contained unit, a site, a stage, a, a, and a stage of grounded globalization as it winds its way among the four stops within the complex. The bus then drives for about half a mile before making its first stop on campus, at which point it takes on other riders so is no longer the unit of study. So the focus is on the 10 or so minutes in which people ride the bus and what happens in that time. When I described the project to my advisor, Professor McCarthy, he directed me to an additional literature on the mobilities paradigm, which focuses on the in-between spaces, the spaces of transit, on airports and gas stations and subways, as places that are as rich and meaningful as those of destinations and static locations. So why the bus? Each person who gets on the bus has their own unique story about how they have come to be here, but they also have many things in common, including the few minutes that they share in the vehicle. Not only is, is the bus a place where they are, it is a place they can't avoid, and it is leveling. Everyone is in it together. Yet while they may be in it together, they got to it from many different places, physically, geographically, and socially, and so they are not in it in the same way. This is a line of inquiry I intend to pursue in the future. The point that is most important to make for this presentation is that time on the bus is not empty time. Each person is busy with their own thoughts, but also with the quick decision of where to sit, whether or not to speak with other people, whether or not to react to what is going on around them. Another reason for a study about the bus is I've always personally very much enjoyed public transport. I prefer taking subways and buses to driving alone in a car, and I've chosen cities to live in because they have good public transportation. Along with buying a ticket to ride, you have also purchased an entry ticket to a particular space. Observing the interaction that takes place in this space can reveal that the time spent traveling to get quote unquote somewhere should not be minimized or overlooked in deference to the eventual arrival. Rather, the less privileged space of a transport vehicle should be mined for the complexity of a setting that it is. So I started the project off based on direct observation with me, the participant observer. My original plan was to focus on behaviors around speech and communication and observe how the writers act and interact in the few minutes that they share. Who do they talk with? In what language? When do they change language? Are children and the elderly, mostly the Chinese grandparents who are here taking care of babies, and many of whom don't speak any English at all, spoken to differently? What could language be said to index? 
But after a couple of weeks of diligent rewriting at the same time and recording data, I discovered that simple observing was too quantifiable. It was too difficult to hear over the engines, and what I was getting was too skimpy. I realized it was going to take talking with people off of the bus to find out more about what was happening on the bus within those few minutes and to get a sense of what it means. So I used what I observed to develop a series of questions and then asked seven people to talk with me. These extended interviews have now become the heart of the study and what people shared has given insight into their experiences living in Orchard Downs. The people I spoke with include four women, two from China, one from Kenya, one from Brazil, and three men, one from South Africa, one from England, one from Turkey. Four are grad students, one a visiting scholar, one a visiting researcher, and one a professor in the social sciences who lived at Orchard Downs 30 years ago, and he provided information on the local housing sector as well. At first, I was focused on what people were doing as individuals and essentially in their private spheres. Who were they sitting with, how they were negotiating their time and space, how they were using language. My focus shifted when I made the discovery of what I call a bus culture. This is about how people are with each other, about the public space within the bus. It concerns how people behave on the bus, what people feel is appropriate to do, also in contrast to their home culture, and falls into three characters categories, what they say and do, whether they speak with the driver, and their quote unquote my driver stories. I sensed that people enjoyed talking with me about this topic and I began to appreciate that the bus rides matter. The full version of my paper describes a number of findings and assertions including about the housing environment, but my key finding, is, which is what I will share here, is about the bus culture. The people who live at Orchard Downs are older, and several of the informants characterize them as more refined and less boisterous than the undergraduates who get on and off the bus uh, when the buses enter the campus grounds. Few of the Orchard Downs uh, riders wear headphones, which, as one said, may indicate that people are more available to each other. Ayesha from Kenya uh, said she had always thought Asian people were quiet and demure, but came to find out this is not so. On the bus, when they are talking together, they can be very loud. And there are particular types of interaction that take place on the bus. For example, people can anticipate running into others. Ayesha said you, uh, you get to expect to see certain people, get to know where they will get off. If you haven't seen someone for a while, you ask why. Sometimes people will ask for help with a move. Or once, my mom is visiting, come meet her. Or do you know a church for me? If I hear on BBC about something in someone's homeland, I will ask if their family is okay. It's also a place, the bus, which, in which the encounters, because they are brief and can contain, can be very pointed and even poignant. Um, for example, Alicia also told me about a series of rides when some, uh, with someone she met from Sudan. On the, first, uh, on the first trip, they shared where they were from. The next time she saw him, there had been an incident in the news and she asked about his family. Sometime later, they saw each other again and took seats together. This time, she was surprised to find out he is an American citizen. On the next occasion, he, he, uh, he revealed that he is a lost boy of Sudan. Manda Mandla from South Africa says he sometimes makes appointments with people to meet on the bus. Folks will text each other to say, I'm taking the 936, meet me if you can, and we can talk about the Africa Day event. Karina from Brazil says she has the face of a front desk person, and because people, uh, because people always ask her for information and open up to her. She announced that she has many stories. There was the professor from Belgium here for just two weeks who she met at the bus stop and he turned out to know someone from her university. The American woman who was very talkative and they were so engaged they got on the wrong bus together. Uh, a few more things, I'm going to skip that. Then there were particular bus behaviors. I observed a student who had gotten on an orchard downs and had moved to the door at the back of the bus to get off on campus. However, there was a crowd by the door he wasn't able to make his way through. By the time he got to the door, it had closed. Although there was plenty of time for it to be reopened, had he called out, he did not do so when the bus moved on. He waited until the next step to get off. Alex, one of my informants from England, said he completely understood this and found it very difficult to call out on the bus. He shared a story about when he lived in Hong Kong, where people shout out when they want to get off the bus. But as a British person and a bit shy, not sure of my Cantonese, I couldn't do it. It went against my DA to shout out on a bus. I learned the words to say, I want to stop and would build up practicing, then blurt it out, but the driver wouldn't understand. I just wait till it stopped to get off or until someone else would say it. You can end up not able to get off. It happened to a friend. Ten minutes went past his house. Then he went to the front to say directly to the driver he couldn't shout it out. I know it probably sounds crazy to you. You'd call out, right? 
He said he couldn't even call out if someone was running for the bus. He'd feel so guilty afterwards, but he couldn't do it. In Indonesia, where he lived for several years with his Indonesian wife, there are no regular bus stops. People wave to the bus for it to stop. Indonesian students who had moved to Orchard Downs told him a very indignant story of the bus not stopping, stopping when they waved it down. They went running after the bus, calling out, bis, bis, and the driver made eye contact with them, but he wouldn't stop. So rude, is it because we aren't Americans, they asked. <laughs> Alex teaches ESL at the university, and he says he should be teaching this uh, as part of cultural awareness and appropriateness. He says, nobody in class ever does transport. We do banks and restaurants and bus schedules, but buses should be in there too. There is so much to know. Um, how to get the bus to stop, the rules, how to do small talk with others. He plans to bring this up in his program. Oh, all of the informants commented on the drivers who greeted them and say goodbye. People don't do this in China, Huan said. There the buses are overcrowded and everyone is too hurrying. But here we feel better when we are greeted. Even more notable was that people thanked the drivers. Almost everyone said they really liked this and have adopted it themselves. Most striking to me... Uh, were what I've called the my driver stories. When I asked people if they had a favorite driver, they all knew exactly what I meant and usually laugh, followed by stories. They notice that the driver they're expecting is not on the route and can be quite disappointed. Um, I'm going to go over this quickly. This is, so a lot of stories, people uh, recognizing their drivers and um, being greeted and who they speak with and how they feel about this. After hearing several of the My Driver stories, I had a realization. When I'm in another country for an extended time, it's not unusual to become familiar with, for example, the person on the corner you buy bread from or the woman in the kiosk where you buy a daily newspaper. They greet you, remember you, they become a colorful local character for you and they anchor you. They have to be working class, I think. Someone professional is not in the same category. I always felt sorry thinking that foreigners don't have this when they come to the US. It's not the same to go to Walmart. But then it struck me, that's what the bus driver is for the students at Orchard Downs. A working class American who greets you, who notices you and remembers you, who makes eye contact. Someone who you look for and who anchors you and you have stories about. I tried to interview one of the drivers. He told me the Orchard Downs route is his favorite. He's driven it for 35 years and he's seen many changes. He's one of the drivers um, people regularly mentioned, but uh, we weren't able to have this appointment. It kept getting canceled. Hopefully that'll happen in the, in the future. Before I wrap up, I'd like to add a couple of other assertions I have in my larger paper. One is the people I spoke with had mixed views on living together as internationals. Orchard Downs used to be heavily Korean, but according to a Korean friend I spoke with, Koreans tend to split up. They don't, uh, they don't like to, to be in groups. She said that Chinese people tend to be more clannish, she said. She said, for example, there are over 300 Korean churches in the Chicago area. Um, now, uh, Orchard Downs is 70% Chinese. Most of my informants, but most of my informants, like myself, appreciate an international community. However, one person said, that they, that they did not like the international designation. She said there is no place called, quote unquote, international. Nobody comes from there or is going back there. Uh, this got me thinking about the construction of the term international student. Who is constructing this idea? What institutional purpose does it serve? What does it mean to have the designation international student and who is identifying with that? Another assertion is that Americans tend to think of internationals and foreigners similarly to disempowered minorities, our way of putting people into a box, but indeed many are elites and highly connected in their home countries. Several talk to me about having to adjust to the racialized climate here and some object to this more than others. I have a few points about this uh, in my larger paper. So uh, to wrap up, the purpose of the study is to examine behaviors and practices that take place on the bus and then to explore through interviews and conversations with the participants points and patterns that emerge to give meaning to their experiences both on the bus and in the localized environment. In a national community, people share a sense of belonging to the national culture, but each international is international in their own way. What the internationals do share is the experience of having crossed borders and of now being in between and among a variety of cultures. And this study offers one small way to look closely at how several individuals think about and handle this. Thank you. <laughs> she actually did a perfect time on timing. So you yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. comments, questions? I'd Don't worry it. about it. <laughs> yes. 
So uh, we have time. Uh, we have five minutes uh, time to have a questions. Yes. Um, in your observation during this study, uh, especially this bus space thing, do you see any dominance or maybe minority in, in, in this bus thing? Uh, you mean within, the, within this, the, the complex, within the community? Yeah, or the nuance that you, you feel in the bus, uh, whether, uh, you know, no, I wasn't able to notice okay. something like that. That's an interesting question. If within the within within this grouping there becomes a kind of a minority with grouping within, only to say that the the it's clearly the Chinese um, population dominates. You know, and one of the things that you can notice is um, is the languages the language that people are speaking, and you realize that um, uh, one of the in one conversation we pointed out that when you hear English you can be pretty sure that it's either a mixed group you know it, it, uh, but that if, if you hear if it's if you don't hear English then it's not a mixed group right so so people and people switch quickly into English as soon as the groups get mixed and you so you do hear a lot of English being spoken but um, uh, I had lots of conversations with people about um, some of the subgroups and who meet each other and how it works, like um, uh, the, how the housing staff um, uh, works with some of the subgroups and how the groups form their own groups and help each other when they arrive at the airport. And, um, you know, there's all kinds of, uh, uh, um, like, infrastructure things that go on within the housing as well, if that answers your question. Yeah, any other questions, comments? Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I've been to Orchard Downs um, only f for very few times, but I, I'm interested about, um, have, are there conversations about um, the use of the, sp the, the bus as a space and in relation to like, is there this racialized use of the bus as a space to, at least within well, the Well, on interview. the contrary, a lot of people, they chose to be in Orchard Downs because of the bus. So the bus travels uh, every 20 minutes, and people who even have cars, they don't want to drive to campus. You know, you have to park and so on. So people, a lot of people choose to live there because of this, you know, access to the, this easier access to the campus. Um, there is also a, a graduate dorm on campus, some people choose to be even closer by, by going there. Um, but this idea about the, like I think the, the idea of the bus is a bit of a construct of mine. So I don't think that people particularly identify with the bus except that, that, that I picked it as a kind of mundane experience to make, to, 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 to raise, um, you know, it's kind of like qualitative research, the idea is to take taken for granted um, experiences and, and show that there's meaning in them. So I took this kind of, I thought, you know, rather mundane experience to, uh, to, to analyze and kind of elevate into, and, and find the meaning in it. And, uh, and I think without even recognizing it that people, people have a feeling about being on the bus that they appreciate in a certain way or they come to appreciate. And I, I hope that that's what I identified. Okay, so this is the end of the second panel. No, uh, there was another speaker. There were. There should be three. No. Um, it. Uh, oh. So we have to change.